Hi, I'm Steve Deneen. I'm the CEO and Chief Storyteller at Fuse. Uh, I've been around the e-learning, online learning industry, I guess, since its birth around the end of the 90s. I founded one of the first UK, uh, European e-learning companies, a company called Fuel. Grew that to be a couple of hundred people. Um, created hundreds and hundreds of e-learning SCORM-based courses, distributed through LMSs, and I'd like to apologise and say sorry. <laughs> it was the best idea we had at the time. The good news is, it no longer is. And I guess the, the question we often get asked is, you know, why did LMSs fail and why have we moved so aggressively away from the concepts around those? And when we say fail, I mean, if you look at, a, I guess, a piece of research done from the Human Capital Institute, it, it was a research done on 500, 500 learning professionals where the net promoter score on LMSs across the board of all of them was a negative minus 33%. So that's a pretty damning statement, I guess, across the concepts of the LMSs you know, as, a, as a learning tool. And I think as a learning tool, LMSs you know, really, really fail on, on, on three core areas. The, the first area is LMSs weren't actually designed for the learner. You know, they're designed for the learning administrator. They're designed for the people who want to track and, and report on what learning is going on. It's a little bit like saying, you know, Facebook or YouTube were first designed as, a, a, um, as an analytics tool first, and then they tried to figure out how do you create user engagement and social networking. It's kind of a, a crazy place to start. And, and that's kind of what happened in LMSs. They were created as decent reporting tracking systems, but their secondary audience by a long shot is the user. Therefore, the whole journey to get to content and create a, learn, a great learning experience is an afterthought. Um, in, in line with that, and I think the second big, biggest reason is the digital content that's at the heart of an LMS, which is SCORM. So SCORM was a standard that was created by the US DOD, the American Department of Defense, uh, in 1999. So four or five years before YouTube and Facebook were created. And, and that standard, that what it allowed in concepts, is allowed any content organization to take uh, any amount of content and put a piece of bubble wrap around it, and that bubble wrap called SCORM, and that bubble wrap then allows that content to be launched and to be tracked um, from one LMS to another. So in concept, it was really useful from a tracking side. But again, from a learner perspective, it it's, it's wasn't really considered. So what you're now doing is you're putting that content um, inside this bubble wrap, which means any time you got to get to that content, you've got to get into the bubble wrap. So we know from people like Professor Ebbinghaus, you know, 100 years ago who did the research that shows that people forget 50% of what they learn within an hour and 80% within a month if they don't use it. So the concept of then making the, the content hard to, uh, hard to access and extremely inaccessible is you put a barrier there. So learner statistics and data statistics shows that less than 1% of content within SCORM, within this bubble wrap, is gone back to after the learning. So that's a huge, huge problem from a learning efficacy perspective. You're basically saying that we know people are gonna forget and actually we're putting the barrier to get back to it is too hard because you've got to remember which course the content is in. You have to search for that, browse that, launch the content and then look inside that to get to it and we don't. So, and that's the reason why it's not being used. So that's I think the, the second big reason. The third big reason is again, it's around the whole content strategy. So LMSs are not content management systems. All the content creation and the, and the content management sits outside the LMS. So take an example of one bank, it has 80 plus versions of its anti-money laundering course. Every time it has a regulation change and it wants to get updated, the actual the, the people who create the content have got to now update 80 versions or 84 versions of the, that piece of content, which is kind of crazy. If you think about a modern world of content management systems, using something like YouTube as an example, you can dump all your content inside it, create as many different playlists as you want, um, and then if you change one piece of content inside it, it automatically changes every playlist. So that's at the heart of what learning systems should be. And if you look at, I guess, any popular consumer, te consumer learning technology, like you know, Udemy or Coursera or Udacity, any of these guys, none of them use LMSs and SCORM as their baseline for success. There has never been a successful consumer learning technology with those, with that, those type of technologies at its heart. So it's interesting, I think once you move away from the fact that you have to have an LMS and you have to have SCORM, it, it's like having some freedom. You know, it's like, I guess, the, it's like, you know, 1492 and the Mayflower landing on the States and, and actually all that opportunity of, of a new world opening up to you. It's exactly the same. You know, you look at all the technologies, concepts that are available to us, all the amazing little startup companies with really cool bits of technology. Uh, you look at inspiration from people like Facebook and YouTube and LinkedIn and Twitter and WhatsApp, and all the concepts that those technologies are based on are now open to use. All the things you couldn't use before because the standard said you can't, you now can design whatever type of learning experiences you want inspired by anything that's innovative or anything that's come on. I mean, it's like, I guess, in the old world that we were trying to create learning solutions in SCORM and LMS was being locked in a time capsule while the rest of the industry was kind of innovating and going forward and we were just stuck. So yeah, so I think the big thing is moving away from that. It feels liberating.